Do you want the truth? Are you tired of being so confused? You feel like you're more fucked up than the lies on the evening news. Well, just step right in. We can talk about it all as friends. And if you want, we can hug and kiss and make up for the party ends. Agree or disagree, stop offering me. Cause I'm everything you want. Damn, so what's your name? I won't tell no lies. Back up all the facts with truth. And if you can't. Good morning, Don't Unfriend Me Nation. Matthew Spear from the Don't Unfriend Me Show. Good to have you here. Uh, trying something a little new with uh, the recorded show. We're going to try to do the show from the old standing position for a little bit because, uh, I don't know, I like it. I like it better. It uh, makes the day go by. It, it, it's like uh, I don't feel like I'm sitting in a chair all day doing nothing and I'm being productive. Uh, lots of stuff going on on Facebook. Um, the, uh, what atheism promised and what atheism brought meme is still crushing. This thing is, uh, is going everywhere. Um, it's just eclipsed 110,000 views and, uh, people are melting down, um, ceremoniously as expected, because the funny thing is, Christians get a bad rap that they don't have a sense of humor and that they take their religious, you know, beliefs so seriously that all you got to do is just say something and they completely melt down. And um, I, I take umbrage with that because I, I don't I don't think that's the truth. I think Christianity is challenged constantly. By the way, happy Red Friday. Uh, Christianity is challenged constantly. Um, and, and one of the basis of Christianity is to spread the word. And that there are going to be challengers, there's going to be naysayers, there's going to be hecklers, there's going to be people who uh, put you in a position that uh, ultimately ultimately make you question your faith. So this this whole misnomer that uh, that Christians can't uh, handle a little bit of um, stormy weather or or challenge or uh, whatever is 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 not my experience at least coming from a kind of an innocent bystander on this who has a healthy amount of faith in science and religion and uh, believe that they can live together harmoniously like Ebony and Ivory on the keyboard as um, Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder sang. But uh, that's just my belief. But people are very upset. And and, and the, the reason why I bring that up is because I see people who are atheists or uh, simply have some sort of form of dogma that they that they've replaced religion with with not believing in God but what they can't see is the irony that that takes belief as well to believe in nothing is still belief and they 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 refuse they will not admit that they they know and I said well it described to me what beliefs are and they're things that you hold true uh, to your heart to your ideology to your makeup okay so describe to me how atheism is antithetical to the same beliefs that Christians have in something that they hold true to their heart. It ultimately gives them guidance. It gives them uh, an answer to questions that they have or the lack thereof, and they're at peace with that. How is that different than, than Christianity? He's like, well, you believe in a, in a person that floats up in the sky. And I said, and you believe that a, there isn't a person that floats up in the sky. What's the difference? Minus a few neurons and, and, and a thought process, what, what, what truly is the difference? That you have uh, an absolute, with no equivocation, a belief that there is no God, 
Christians have a belief that there is. What is the difference? Well, mine's real and yours not. How do you know that? Well, I just do. Science tells me. No, science doesn't tell you that. In fact, that's the problem, is, is that there is no incontrovertible evidence of no existence to God. Now, you can sit here and say, okay, well, we can have a theory about going through a black hole and uh, leaping through the fabric of time and, and on a wormhole in space and get out on the other side, and ultimately, uh, maybe it takes us to a parallel universe or uh, some sort of multiverse or back in time or forward in time or ripping through the fabric of time, whatever it may be, and that's a theory, and it may be a good one, but it's not something that's been proven. So therefore, if you have something that's called science, and it's not provable, but yet you still believe it, is that faith? And the answer is yes, it's faith. It's faith in the equations, it's faith in the physics, it's faith in all of that. So atheism is a religion. You may not have a deity and you may not wear funny clothes and get on your knees and eat a wafer and drink the blood of Christ, but you do drink a particular brand of vodka. And just because it's not the same type of vodka that Christians or Catholics or Muslims or Jews or, or, or Mormons or, or Baptists or satanic priestesses believe, it's still a form of religion. Well, I'm agnostic. Okay, okay but you're splitting hairs. You still have a belief in nothing. And you can't prove that. You can't prove there is no God, just like I can't prove that the theory of black holes aren't correct based upon the current scientific evidence. Yet you've never been in one. Yet you've seen one, what you think is a black hole, what you, for your understanding and what you're trying to conceptualize. But, but we can sit here and talk about the God particle too. And, and we can talk about the beginning of the universe. And you say Big Bang, and other people say it's a snap of a fingers like Thanos, and it was created in seven days in a brilliant flash of light, and blah, 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 blah. Either way, you still believe something, even when you believe nothing. It's an interesting point. So I, I just, uh, I, I, I love when they come in. I love when, when non-Christians tell me about my Christianity, just like I love non-scientists telling me about science. It's, it's interesting. So that, that thing's going big. And, and people are very upset. They're very... I've never seen atheists, and you can tell these are once Christians who are bitter, right? It's this new generation whose parents brought them up with God and they got mommy and daddy issues. Because other athe atheists were just like, whatever, dude, I don't care. I don't believe in what you believe in. Leave me alone. That was the way atheism used to be. Uh, that's the way agnostic people used to be. They're just like, dude, just get it out of my face. I don't want to hear it. It's very much similar to the LGBTQ plus two spirit thing. We just don't want to hear it. Just enough. Okay. I don't need to go to, I don't need to go to a Disney movie about princesses and find out that they're lesbians and they're, you know, 69ing each other. Okay. I, I don't, I don't care. Right. And I didn't want to see Prince Harming, Charming hump Snow White either. So just leave that shit out of the movies. We don't want to see it. We don't want to have it in our libraries. Just, just. I don't care what type of it is. It, I mean, it could literally talk about the Virgin Mary and Immaculate Conception. I don't want that in the schools either. I don't want any of that stuff near my kid. That's my job. So people are upset. A lot of people liked, like this, this, this post, this video, it's the first video I've had that's had over a million views, and it, it's, it's doing very well. In fact, we're now sitting at 189,324. Most of you saw us hit 189,000 last night. We're averaging almost 100 likes an hour. So the site is getting a lot of exposure right now. In the video that we did on the ship, there's some very uh, cathartic and palpable feelings coming out of it. Some people are, are calling me a loser and, and uh, what do I know? And I'm not an expert. And it's amazing that I talked about that yesterday before all the hate came because I knew this was coming. Unless I have a PhD in thermodynamics or uh, I'm an engineer or I understand hydro propulsion systems, uh, therefore I can't speak on it. Then why can you discredit me if you don't have the same degrees? Okay, so here we are again, just exactly like Christianity and atheism, all you're doing is being a hypocrite. So just because I don't have a degree in brain surgery if you asked me to do the first five steps of brain surgery, I'm pretty confident that I could do the first five steps without cracking a book, okay? I would wash my hands. I would scrub uh, religiously, no pun intended. 
I would put on my protective gear. I would make sure that my headlamp is working effectively. I would make sure that all the tools and everything I have, I would talk to the anesthesiologist with a plan based on the person's weight and their height and their age and where their current heart stasis is to decide how much anesthesia we want to give them. I would then ensure that the patient is shaved thoroughly in the area that we're going to go in. I would also make sure I have all the right scalpels and tools and, and, and salad tongs in order to do the procedure. And then I would stop. I would stop. But that doesn't mean that I can't take a few steps in the realm of brain surgery. It doesn't mean I can't take a few steps in how to replace an engine block. It doesn't mean I can't go ahead and start playing around and mixing with some chemicals and get to the basic steps of how to go ahead and create uh, some sort of, of, of chemical without blowing up my entire house. Like, let's take black powder, for example. I'm pretty confident I can mix those proportions effectively, and I'm not a chemist. I also can define what a woman is, and I'm not a scientist. Isn't that funny? So just because, once again, that someone does not have a degree, it doesn't mean that they're not capable of talking about something. Especially if you can't go on and challenge their points, then all you are is a jealous, petulant little turd. That's all it's about. If you can't come on here and say, Matt, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you're an idiot because of this, then then all you are is someone who is frustrated that you don't have the same capabilities that I possess to get in front of people and have a conversation. So you start off with words like idiot and moron, even though you know that's not true. I communicate in an effective way. I'm articulate. I get to the point occasionally, and I have a show that's fairly successful. So to sit there and, and, and cast aspersions, it just it proves how jealous and petulant you are. So for the people who aren't that way, and there are tens of thousands of people who are just interacting with the post, and I find it to be completely interesting to listen to their points of view, not the people who are like, this is 9-11. No. No, this bridge is not 9-11. In fact, it's not even remotely close to 9-11 let alone that it was a horizontal collapse. We could just talk about aesthetics. Two buildings, a bridge. The only thing they had in common roughly was the overall height. If you laid them down. But if you put them together, World Trade Center 1 and 2 are longer than that. You had Building 7, and it's completely longer than that, and that doesn't hold any water. The amount of steel, the amount of tonnage isn't even remotely the same. The amount of inertia, the amount of impact, the amount of damage, the amount of cost, none of those things are even going to be remotely close. Let's look at the loss of life. Let's look at the fact that there were no terrorists. There were no planes. There were not multiple strikes on the Pentagon and other places all around that were intended to get hit, including possibly the White House. Nothing like that. There were no groups of people. There were no foreign governments involved that we know of yet. In fact, there's no proof of any of that. There's no war taking place. We didn't lower our defense condition. We didn't shut down all shipping vessels and shipping lanes. We d this is nothing like 9-11. Oh, yeah, well, it, 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 oh, it sure is, because from a conspiracy standpoint, it's our government. Uh, okay. I, I can't talk to you. I can't help you. And I'm not designed to, because I guess what? I'm not a psychiatrist, psychologist either. I can't prescribe medicine and I can't dive into your head and tell y'all, even though I can do the first five steps, that you're freaking crazy. I can't, I can't help you. And there are different levels of awareness. When people go, why don't you wake up? It's like, bro, self-awareness, sister, self-awareness. I'm not the one sleeping. I'm not the one literally waking up, grabbing my coffee. Okay, today I'm going to go watch a, a podcast. I'm going to go watch. I'm going to go watch Charlie Kirk. Uh, I'm going to go watch Laura Logan. And I'm going to memorize everything they say. And then I'm going to go regurgitate it to the masses. And I'm going to find my victims. I'm going to hunt down to people who are saying things that are not exactly the same thing that Charlie Kirk said. Exactly what Laura Logan said. And instead of listening to them, I am going to berate them, insult their intelligence, make fun of their beard or how old they are or what their penis size is or isn't, even though you have no idea. I'm going to go ahead and make fun of Mel, who is an absolute treasure 
to the United States, being a Canadian who served in the military honorably, did amazing things for her country, who is an expert on the topic, and some ass bag from Baltimore, and I know you're watching, stalker, because I called you last night and read you the fucking riot act, insults my friend based upon her speech and based upon her inability to string things together in an effective way that some people would consider to be dumb, but it's not. She's just trying to connect the dots because she suffered a stroke. So so people like that, there's no hope for you. And I did talk to Joe. Joe's from Baltimore. Joe threatened me. Joe said, why don't you come on? Why don't you come find me? Where are you at? Why don't you come see me? Why don't you come see me? I called him to see you next Tuesday about 45 times. Then I went ahead and challenged him about stolen valor. And he told me he was in the army, but he can't remember his MOS. And he couldn't tell me what job he was in. So not only is it a pretentious douchebag, but he's also a stolen Fowler twat waffle. So I, gotta, I, I just got to just say that you're doing this because a bridge fell in Baltimore and you have an opinion and you have decided which sports team you're going to cheer for. And nobody is going to tell you anything different. Nobody. You know, there used to be a thing around here where we didn't belittle intelligence and we actually listen to people. And you know what's funny is that I pick a very particular brand of topics to talk about. They're usually military, political in nature, geopolitical to be specific. They usually have something to do with military equipment or shipping vessels or aircraft or weapon systems because that's what I know and that's what I did. To sit here and say that I've come out and said that I know everything about, about how to navigate a vessel, that, that, that traversing through a, a port or an inlet or how to anchor a vehicle of this size or how the engine systems work effectively. To say that I've come out here and said, this is my expertise and I don't know. I've learned just as much as you. I've learned things from Melanie. I've learned things from Mel. I've learned things from the two captains that I talked to, maritime captain and military captain in Annapolis. It was a good friend of mine. I learned from the police officers who reported there. I learned the, uh, from uh, the NTSB agent that I talked to. And I also learned from friends from Department of Homeland Security. And guess what I get labeled with? The moment I give you my resume, he's a freaking, he's, he's a spook. I was a spook. I, I haven't hidden that fact. But I'm 30 years removed from being a spook, and I'm as much of a spook on Halloween when I put a sheet over my head, not a white with a hood, but two eye holes, and that's about as much as spooky as I get. Or you could talk about the time in bed with your wife, and I get a little freaky in the sheets, but spooky isn't the word that she used. She kept praying a lot in Latin. So the whole point I'm trying to make to you is that there is nothing I can do to appease you. It doesn't matter if I'm in a three-piece suit. It doesn't matter whether I have degrees all over my wall. It doesn't matter if there's a picture of me on the bridge rappelling onto the ship during the time of incident. You will never listen to anything I have to say. And the reason why is because you don't want to hear. What you want is someone to tell you that you're right. You want mommy and daddy to give you a trophy and say, good job, good boy, Pavlov's dog. I'm not that guy. I will be demeaning sometimes. I will be condescending sometimes. I will be egotistical sometimes. That is because I know my shit. And if you don't buy it and you think that you can do a better job to explain this to people than I can, then come on the show and do it. We've got a number for you. I'll put the link in right now. You can come in and tell me everything I've missed in the last four days. And you can tell me who has covered it better than I have. Let me know. Tell me where to go. There you go. Click that little link. Make sure that your phone or your computer has their camera on. And, and let's come and have a conversation. If you don't want to do that, you can call Skype. The mods are going to put that in there for you. Could one of you please do that kindly? And, and don't be my regular listeners who just want to talk. Hey, Matt, how you doing? 
I love you guys. I want the opposition to call in. I want the person who calls in who believes that this was a military uh, intended strike by the U.S. government, by uh, Houthi rebels, by some sort of foreign government, Jewish space lasers, Chinese hackers, uh, a Ukrainian skipper who decided all of a sudden to go ahead and take out the bridge. Why? Well, because I can. Those are the people I want to call in my show. But what's funny is you won't. Because the moment that you have to put your face on camera and put your words to it, your asshole puckers tighter than a straight guy in prison. And the reason why is because you don't believe what you're saying. You're afraid to say the things that you want to say because you know their surface level. You know their regurgitated talking points. And if you had the ability to get up here and do this, you would have done it already. And that's okay because I'm not going to quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers next year, okay? The only other person besides me who is delusional about that is Colin fucking Kaepernick, okay? I understand. I'm not a, a quarterback. I can't throw that ball. I can hardly throw a football. I can slap shot a puck across the ice and I'll put your freaking lights out right between your eyes. But I can't throw a football to save my life. It looks like a dying duck. But I can explain football to you, and I can break down the positions, and I can break down the plays, and I can describe a 3-4 and a 4-3 if I want to. I can talk about a zone defense. I can talk about a prevent defense. I can talk about what the power eye is. I can do a lot of things in football. I can do a lot of things in hockey and baseball and tell you all about it, but I can't play it. And just because I can't play it doesn't mean I don't understand the sport as well as you. So if you're that person and you're one of the millions, we had just hit 3.2 million interactions this week. And thank God, because it's nice to have a little bit of money coming in. The video is crushing. It's well over a million views. Most of it's profoundly positive. Most people are respectful. And then you got the yahoos making fun of my mother, saying, what do you know? You're in the army, you know, all those people. So if you want to learn something, you're going to have to do a couple things. One is you're going to have to listen. And if you're like the person that goes, why don't you show the video of the explosions? Isn't it funny that people who say, watch the video, don't watch the video that I made with those videos already in it. It's kind of like non-Christians telling Christians about their faith. It's a video, it's a non-video person who didn't watch the video telling me to put videos in that are already there because they didn't watch the video. I already broke it down. I've already went through the explosions. I've already went through the hacking. I've already went through the prop wash. I already went through the inlet. I already went through why the tugboats weren't there. I already told you what happened from a timeline. I showed you an animated video of it that rivals Disney. And the cool thing was it wasn't woke. There were no rainbow flags on the ship. I broke down up close. I gave you high speed. I gave you low speed. I showed you multiple camera angles. I disproved the Crimea bridge explosion, which was 2022 in October and has nothing to do with this bridge. In fact, it's not even the same fucking country. I already disproved the, the, the space laser bullshit with the Maui fires. And I did it again for this, that the Zionists went ahead and sunk the ship. It's already been done. But when you come into a show and you invest 30 seconds after someone has invested 30, 40, 50, 60 hours into this in the last five days, do you feel that you're giving yourself enough time? Do you want to know how many people I hear go, screw you, you fucking F-tard, retard, liberal? Liberal? What fucking screams about me says liberal? Is it the tattoos? Is it the beard? Is it the support for the military or the ABC construction? What says FBI? What says fib to you? That I use an intellect that most people don't use on the internet? That I speak in a way that doesn't match the way I dress? Is that why? That you think I'm an FBI agent? He's an FBI guy. 
Trust me when I say this, the FBI that I do know and the friends that I do have, and I sit across from breakfast from several fibs every single weekend, I'm not their favorite person because I like to say things about them that they don't like sometimes, just like I say things about all people sometimes that they don't like. Let's stop pretending that your knee-jerk reaction is you hear something that triggers your brain that you don't like. Thank you for the donation. Oh, hey, nice. Thank you, Anonymous. I appreciate you. I know we can't say anything, but I do appreciate it. Folks, if you're interested, you can donate paypal.me slash don't unfriend me. It's always free. There's no secret. We're going to have a club soon. You know, people will get some access, but I'm always going to keep the show free. The donations help keep us around, keeps us online, okay? You notice how we don't have stars? Facebook, I get 200,000 followers, but I can't have stars. Facebook won't give me stars. They don't want you to give me money. They don't want my live show to be successful. We had 650 people on last night, so I'll call that successful. I, I will call that successful. That rivals Ben Shapiro, what he's done over the last couple of nights. I'll take it. Just keep showing up. Right now, it's an impromptu show. We got 200 plus on between Rumble, Twitter, here, Spreely TV. Good, I'll take it. There were days that we had 10 people on. There are buddies of mine who bust their ass every day to provide you content, and they got 10 people watching, and it makes me sick. People work hard to do this stuff. And when you have a show that invests their time and actually is trying to bring you something, whether you agree with it or not, you have the process and the obligation if you're going to engage to at least engage wholeheartedly. Don't make a half-ass effort. Don't listen for 30 seconds and then pull the plug. Give it a few minutes, man. There's times where I'm listening to the Young Turks and I want to slit my wrist to see color. It's so drab and dreary over there. But I listen anyway because I can find things that I enjoy. A perfect example is the first clip we're going to watch with Dave Rubin. I didn't like Dave Rubin when he was on The Young Turks. I haven't liked him since he became a conservative. L let me tell you why. Because I truly believe that your principle or principles your your value, your intrinsic value, your inherent methodology of who you are, your internal code cannot be changed. Once it's established, those values remain with you intrinsically. And you will turn them into reality based upon the interactions that you have with outside stimuli. For instance, I looked up at my apartment building. My back was horrible. I just got done with surgery a couple weeks before. I look up at a window. My neighbor never met her in my life. And I recognize a flicker in her house that is not a candle, but is a small fire. I recognize it because, once again, I'm not a fireman. I did D.C. control in the Navy. My father was a fire captain. I used to go to Oxnard College and listen to him lecture but I'm not a fire captain. I'm not a fireman. I'm not, I'm not a fire science major. Once again, you don't have to be an expert to see things or dabble in things. You can be a dilettant. You can be good at a little bit of everything, but nothing at all very well. There's nothing wrong with that. I've made a career out of it. And as I look up to that window, I see a flicker and I recognize that it absolutely is a fire. And it looks like something, an early set, like a candle that's basically heating up to the glass and all the carbon on the outside of the candle's lit, or it's a piece of paper, or it's, it's a plant or something. But it's the beginning. I can tell from the flicker. And I run up to the third floor, and I, put, I knock on the door. There's no answer. I knock again. It's unresponsive. I try to look at the keyhole, through the keyhole, nothing. I can't get anything. So I crawl along the staircase, and I lean over her balcony, which I... I'm surprised I didn't fall, and I could see her feet on a couch, and she's laying down, and I can see, I can't see her head, and I can't see her hands, but I can see her feet, and I can see that there is a fire on a candle that has caught fire to the lace doilies, and it's 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 going up. 
So I put my boot in the door repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. I can't kick this son of a bitch down. I'm 6'4", and I'm 225, and I cannot kick this thing down. And I know how to kick a door. I didn't go to a door, dicking, door kicking uh, seminar and become a, get my doctorate in it. I did it the way you're supposed to do it. You're learning it with cops and learning it with operators. And I still can't kick this damn door down. And I'm a strong guy. After about seven or eight times of kicking this thing, my wife's on the phone with 911. I, slow, I hear the padlock open up. And this lady who is completely out of it with a fire behind her, my wife runs up with a fire extinguisher. We get past her. We hit it. We put it out. Curtains all done. Walls all done. The lady would have burned to death, most sure, most assuredly. Most assuredly. My first instinct wasn't to go into my room and ignore it. My first instinct wasn't to go ahead and, and uh, you know, just, just pretend I didn't see it. My first instinct was to go up the stairs and get involved. There are people out there who will not. The same thing is true for when I've heard people in apartment buildings beating the shit out of their girlfriend and almost put her through a wall and deciding to grab my hockey stick before I was carrying in California and put my boot on that door and tell the guy to come outside and, t- and fight me. And I don't know how fucking big he is. There is a, 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 there is a thread inside certain people that they get involved. If you're not one of those people who get involved, then maybe you shouldn't get involved. If you don't want to get involved, don't get involved. Corey says, I don't understand why you're yelling at your audience. I don't understand why you consider what I'm saying as yelling. Maybe you're a little sensitive. Corey Hawk. With a name like Corey Hawk. That's a name out of sci-fi novel. That, that's like the assassin who takes on the corrupt king or something. Cory Hawk. The Blade Runner. It's a little, little kind of weak, dude. I'm not yelling at anybody. Yelling is, uh, is, is screaming at people. Is belittling people. That's not what's happening. I'm capable of talking in a passionate voice maybe even with frustration, and still have an intellectual conversation. Can you? I'm sure you can. I'm sure you've been in those situations. If you want to hear me yell, it's a sight. I I have no problem yelling. What I'm doing is I'm trying to explain to people who are not my audience, who are new to my audience, like yourself, who have no idea about me and make assumptions. Thank you for proving my point. Thank you for coming into the show and proving exactly what I was saying. Coming in, listening for 30 seconds, making snap judgments, and then casting aspersions on people in order to go ahead and justify what you don't understand. It's completely normal, Corey, and I'm cool with it because it happens all the time. But the whole point of the story, and I'm glad you're here for it, is let me tell you, usually those people, most of them, will say something snide, say something rude, uh, tell, me, tell me my wife's fat, or tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about, or that I'm stupid, or I'm a trump tart, or a maggot whatever it is, you know, just usual knee-jerk stuff. And then something happens. It's either I retort and they run and hide for the hills, which is usually what happens, or they might make a stab at it. They might reply 10 times. There are people who have replied 600 times because they're manic. Whatever it is, very rarely is it better than their first post. People don't get better with age. They are not a fine wine. They actually are closer to cheese sometimes. And these are the people who are bitter in life. But occasionally, and more often than not lately, because how I react to people is that I don't try to belittle them in chat unless they do the same to me. I don't try to degrade them unless they do the same to me. I don't try to do any of those things unless they do things like that to the people who listen to my show. But it is crazy in just the last last few days, I would say that more people come back and go, whoops, I misjudged you. I thought you were one thing, and then I started watching some of your other shows, because even though I didn't like you, and I didn't like what you had to say, I decided that you challenged me to listen, and I did, and holy shit, I've learned something. And actually, I get you. I understand what you're trying to do. See, my religion is a little bit different than most people. I believe that you shouldn't say anything about a subject if you don't know the facts. 
Isn't that amazing? That instead of just thinking aloud and trying to disseminate all the intake and making predictions as you go along, that you should be very careful what you say unless you know the truth. And if you don't know the truth, it's important to state that it's either fact or it's fiction. This is where Dave Rubin and I didn't agree because his ideology changed everything about him. He said, I'm a Democrat. I believe in abortion. Uh, I believe that guns are, uh, should be regulated. I believe in a larger government. I think taxes should be increased. All these things that Dave Rubin believes when he's with the Young Turks. Then Dave Rubin decides, hey, hey, like Harry Carey, hey, I got an idea, decides I'm no longer a Democrat. Now, I believe the reason he came to that conclusion is because he wasn't making it as a Democrat. But that was my ignorance, or at least me making a snap judgment. So a couple of months ago, Leroy, who is a co-host of this show, which you can come back at 7 o'clock if you can handle a little bit of yelling once in a while, uh, even though it wasn't yelling, is, uh, is Leroy says, hey, I really like Dave Rubin. And I'm like, what? Wait, wait, why? This guy, literally, his neurons are set. He's 30 plus, right? He decides, I think, I'm just going to change who I am, everything about me, and I'm going to abandon all my principles. To me, I find that to be... I would rather have him be a liberal. At least I know that you have conviction. But to, to completely change all your belief structure, just because for one day you just go, no, I'm going to be, can you imagine being conservatives out there or liberal or independent or whatever you are, that all of a sudden you're just going to say, hey, wait a second, I'm just going to become a Democrat. Does that even, does that even wax with you? It's like Tulsi Gabbard. She's one of the most progressive Democrats ever. She's not even considered a Democrat. She was a progressive socialist. That woman's policies are so freaking far past AOC and, uh, and Klobuchar and, uh, and, and Bernie and Warren that I can't even compare. She's Kamala Harris bad. And now all of a sudden she's a conservative? Give me a break. No, she's not. She realized she wasn't gaining traction with the Democrats, so she became an independent and then started rubbing shoulders, and now she's getting on Tucker and everywhere else because she's pretty, and she's smart, and she's accomplished, but she's not a conservative, and people are like, you know what they're saying? Hey, hey, I want her as vice president. What? You think Nikki Haley's a neocon and a rhino, but you want Tulsi Gabbard? Now I'm yelling. Now I'm yelling. Now I'm yelling, Corey. Now, yeah, like, why is he yelling? Now I'm yelling. Now is the day. Obey. Today's the day. I'm yelling. I told y'all three and a half years ago that Nikki Haley was going to be on the final ticket against Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis, and she was going to be picked as VP. And I was called. I was called. Uh, a neocon. I was called a liberal. I was called a rhino. And I studied the election results after 2020. And I looked at the demographics and I looked at the voting base. And the only thing that stood out to me after all the predictions that I made in 2020 and 2022 that were right, by the way, just ask the audience, you know, the ones I yell at, ask them. And I said, Donald Trump lost a few key demographics. He lost the middle. He lost the suburban voter outside of the inner cities. Not the rural, but the suburban housewife. And he did not gain across, I don't care what demographics, whether it's educated, uneducated, he did lose with uneducated males. And he got less. But the key is, if you just look at all, instead of looking at the KP Kafkas and going down class phylum order, blah, 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 blah. Look at the top. Look at kingdom. The two big results for demographics and the only ones that matter, men, women, that's it. Now, liberals will tell you, well, you're missing 63 other gender. No, no, screw you. Men and women, 
That's all you need to look at. If you're looking at a national campaign, I don't give a crap about Chinese. I don't care about Jews. I don't care about Gentiles. I don't care about the Amish. I don't care about the one-legged, uh, one-eyed, lesbian, purple Jewish people eaters. I don't care about any of that. I care about two demographics, men, women, men, women. And if you look from 2016 to 2020, Trump had a 3% increase in women and a 4% increase 2016 from the previous election in 2012. Between 2020 and 2016, the nice thing is that Donald Trump stayed at 3%, 4%, the exact same total that he got in 2016 based upon the current census and the amount of people who voted, even with all the mail-in ballot bullshit, which we're going to talk a little bit in a few minutes. The interesting point is that Joe Biden gained from Hillary Clinton, 7%. 4% in the males and 3% in the females, which negated Donald Trump's zero flat performance, and that's why he lost the election. 90,000 votes over three different key states. That's how close it really was. Closer than just about any other race we've seen in modern day history. So when we sit here and we say, well, who's he going to pick as VP? First of all, nobody knows. And anyone that says they do, including Laura Loomer and all these people who are around, they don't know. Donald Trump isn't telling anyone what he's done because Donald Trump doesn't know yet because he needs to figure out what the hell RFK is doing. Because RFK is polling anywhere from 14 to 20%, folks. And if he comes in with that, that isn't good. I told you the reason why Nikki Haley was going to be considered was for a few reasons. One is because she brought in independent voters. Two, she brought in blue collar Democrats. And three, she brought in the women not on this podcast and who aren't MAGA, who will come over, who were never Trumpers because he brings stability. These are the same people that would not vote for Trump until Mike Pence got on the ticket. How am I doing? Am I still yelling at everybody? So I've been saying this for three and a half years. Every single person on this podcast right now who's watched me will tell you, even for the last three months and back, will tell you this is what I've been saying with Nikki Haley, is that she is the clear candidate, even if Trump has said no, even if he called her a bird brain, because folks, even when she's out of the race, she's pulling 20, 30% of the vote and she's not even in it anymore. With whom? Okay, have fun. Don't kiss her. So, so what we're, he's going to the park with his girlfriend. So, uh, what we're saying here is Nikki Haley, although you might find Byron Donald to be a great choice, as do I. You might find Ben Carson to be a great choice, as do I. Christy Noem is a good choice. Uh, Yeah, maybe. Sarah Huckabee Sanders is a good choice. Sure. You might say that there are other people who look Stefanic is a good choice. All of those things are, are, might be true. But the one thing you've forgotten in this situation is every single one of those people are MAGA. And they already bring those voters into the circle. The only person who has a shit ton of votes that Donald Trump needs is Nikki Haley. And they aren't going to come home. They're going to stay home. They're going to vote for RFK. And some of them, no matter how bad it hurts, will vote for Joe Biden or write in DeSantis or write in in Nikki Haley. I want you to watch this video. And I want you to tell me what you think. Has chat just died? Because we've got a crap ton of people on and I'm not seeing chat. Has this happened again where chat is broken? Can somebody tell me one of the mods? I don't know why chat's breaking again. But all those people who've liked the show, thank you. I I love that you did that because usually when we have this many people on, we have like 50 likes. Thank you so much. Appreciate you doing that. By the way, real quick, before we get into this video, before we get into this video, you guys can go to The Dumb Nation. If you would like at thedumbshow.com, you guys can pick up hats and shirts. A cool Red Friday shirt. It's Red Friday. Do it. 
pick up coffee, all that other stuff. Veteran made, 10% goes back to the Travis Manion Foundation. And I will tell you, we don't do gimmicky shit. We use the best shirts, the best quality, best hats, best coffee. A lot of people say that. Take the Pepsi Challenge. We've got 165 five-star reviews on that site, and we've done over 1,000 transactions. That's pretty good for a small podcast. It does very well. You get your stuff on time. And once again, just ask anyone, and they'll tell you how great it works. All right, let's get to this video. Oh. <sighs> So excited. There seems to be an interesting thing happening with Nikki right now. All right. I want you to listen. I want you to listen closely. Okay. Listen to what Mr. Rubin says. Listen to what Megan Kelly says. And you tell me if I'm not sitting here and ready to do my mic drop. Does that mean that Trump's going to pick Haley? No, but it's so funny how the rest of the conservative world is now coming around to what I've been saying for three and a half years. They're doing the same thing with a stolen election, mind you. The same thing. The crap that I've been saying about the stolen election that are now saying. The things I've said about Ukraine they're now saying. The things that I have talked about with Donald Trump in regards to the Constitution, people are saying. It's kind of funny. Isn't it? Why are people all of a sudden shifting gears on Nikki Haley? I don't know. Maybe it's because that's what the tea leaves say. And that's what the numbers say. And if Donald Trump wants to win, he's got to get the most votes possible. And this is the only way. And remember, Megyn Kelly and Dave Rubin are going to use terms and words that I have specifically used. I want you to listen, see if you can point them out. There seems to be an interesting thing happening with Nikki right now where there's two kind of schools of thought. One is that she can bring in new voters. So here's Kaylee McEnany, who used to, she was like the shining star of the, of the Trump presidency. Uh, he subsequently has turned on her, but she said, uh, Nikki Haley just congratulated Trump, her opponent, on his win. Politics is a game of addition, and Nikki adds a different voting block to Trump's base. I realize that MAGA doesn't want it. They've convinced themselves that Nikki Haley is, ag is against all the things that they stand for, in particular, the new isolationist strain mm -hmm. um, within the Republican Party. She's the opposite. She's more of a neocon. But Trump, he personally really must win mm -hmm. if he doesn't want to go to jail. If that's your situation, I think you might be thinking, MAGA's going to get over Nikki Haley if I tell them to get over Nikki mm -hmm. Haley. MAGA feels the way I tell them to feel. Yep. He's probably thinking if if he wants her, they'll get they'll get past it. They're not going to sit at home and not come out for me. And they're not going to watch me lose to Joe Biden. There seems to be an interesting thing happening with Nikki right now where there's two kind of schools. You can donate to the Shrine of Matt at PayPal. <laughs> Just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Although if you want to, you can donate. It pays the bills. So unlike some people's opinions, I'm not paid opposition. I'm not paid by the RNC, the DNC, the independents. My I-9s are all on record with Facebook. I am a political organization of, of one, two, three, four, five. Myself, my wife, Leroy, Amy, and I consider my mods the MUDs, not the dumbs, but the MUDs, that, which are all the moderators. And we've got quite a few of them to be a part of the team as well. Uh, <laughs> how? How, how did you know this three years ago that it was going to be Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, and Donald Trump? How did you know? None of us thought. We all thought it was going to be DeSantis on the VP ticket for him. And then I was like, DeSantis is going to run. And you're like, no, he won't. He won't run. He won't turn on. My yes, he will. Because the RNC is going to go to him. Because they don't want Trump again. And they're going to do whatever they can. And guess what? There was a civil war. And they lost which is why Laura is in the RNC now. And MAGA is now officially the Republican platform. Whether you like it or not, come win, lose, or draw, that's what it is. The RNC, classic conservatism, is dead. It's now MAGA. That's what we are. And you either like that or you don't. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of split down the middle because here's, here's the real, real scary truth, okay? Here it is. Here it is. Here's the truth. Here's me yelling at my listeners again. Corey, you're not going to live that down. I hope you come back. I hope you still watched. Here's the truth. MAGA hasn't won shit since 2016, okay? Zero, zilch, nada, nothing. MAGA has nothing but for a better part of eight years. 
We lost. We've lost everything. We're not winning. We had a couple successful things in Virginia with Youngkin, but that wasn't MAGA. That was people like me and conservatives who I am considered MAGA, but it wasn't a MAGA movement. In fact, Donald Trump had nothing to do with it. They didn't even want him in the state. Youngkin said, no, don't come. It was because they went ahead and talked about taking our uh, AR-15s. 300,000 people, including myself, marched on the state capitol and said, <laughs> no. They went after parents' rights. They went after veterans and the school board. And Youngkin came in and said, no, you're not going to do that. So Virginia turned red. But guess what? They still didn't vote for Trump. And they certainly didn't vote for any red candidates in 2022. The truth is this, is MAGA, although we all love Make America Great Again, we love the policies, we love Trump policies, that's, yes, I have spent days, hours, and weeks, oh, it's, it's, um, that's, that's a, that's a 1971 Daisy pump action almost authentic Winchester BB gun and pellet rifle. They don't make them like that anymore. It's, it's wood. It's not plastic. And that's the, that's the BB gun I had as a boy. So I've got my M1 and I've got, you know, my AR-15 and my LaRue and BCM upper and LaRue lower and, you know, my, my glitz and glamour weapons and Glocks and everything else, but this is this is my my childhood BB gun that I've had, and my and I kept it because it's a it's beautiful. It, it, I've had offers, I've had thousands of dollar offers for this thing, and it's in perfect condition, still fires, and it looks just like a, win, a Winnie. So so that's the answer to that question. Everybody's like, is that Winchester? No, it's a BB gun, it's a pellet gun, but it looks badass, right? I mean, it was, and I got it as a kid. Yeah, but chef, this isn't my good background. My good background's over here, but this is my stand-up background, right? So it adds a little bit of, it, you can tell the difference between the AM show and the PM show. So that's, that's why I do that. Okay. This whole, this whole thing, when it comes to Trump, is you should be worried. And I will tell you, there is nothing that Donald Trump is going to do. Right now, the Democrats have a war chest that is insurmountable. Well, guess what? So did, so did Hillary Clinton. People don't care about oppo ads. They know everything about Trump. This whole posturing of getting Clinton and, and Biden and all of them together yesterday and rising up from the lower rings of hell, holy shit, was that symbolism or what? It's all dog and pony show. This race will not be about money. Everybody already knows Biden. They already know his shitty policies, and they already know everything about Donald Trump. So the money isn't going to do it this time. What the money does get you, which you people are not thinking about, is that it gets you more people out grassroots marketing for ballot harvesting, to getting people out to vote, to ensuring that watch captains are properly in place at every single polling station, to use money to petition the state government for more polling places, hours to stay open longer, to do court cases and fund court cases to expand the amount of ballots and the amount of check marks it takes to certify a ballot. This is where that money will be spent. And this is where we can lose. If you don't bring five people with you to vote, if you are going to vote on the day of, which I highly, highly discourage. And that's something else I've been saying for three and a half years. And now you're starting to hear Glenn Beck say it. You're starting to hear other people say it. You start Megan Kelly say it. And the reason why is once again, is either they watch my show or I I'm right. And I don't think it's because they watch my show. But it's funny how everybody doesn't say the things that I say and then I say them and then somehow it makes it onto their show. So either stop stealing my shit and hire me so I can do this full time. Thank you, Lawrence, for your order. 
Got some coffee. Oh, that is good coffee, too. The Fuck Joe Biden Light Roast. It's fantastic. You're going to love it. Made by a veteran in Wisconsin. It is brewed right when you order. Not brewed, but it's ground and packaged. When you open it, it's so aromatic because it's literally ground and then sent to you and packaged. You'll have that within five to seven days because it's a Friday. He'll send it out on Wednesday and you'll probably have it by next weekend. It's amazing stuff. Good price. It's a little more expensive than most coffee because it tastes ridiculously good and it's going to a good cause. So enjoy your coffee. I hope you love it. Tell me, how, tell me what you think. If you don't love it, we'll figure out and get you another bag, okay? Thanks for your purchase. What is Karen saying? Karen says, that's like when they say, do your research when your opinion is different from theirs instead of having a conversation and exchanging ideas. Yeah. Amy says, Karen, they said doing your research was wrong. Karen, when did reading become controversial? Spreadly Media is a great platform. Okay. Um, just subscribe. Thank you, Jennifer. Ben Shapiro is a Zionist. Can, can I just can I just be plain with you, Pappy? Is that cool? Can I just be honest? Can, can I be honest? What qualifies someone being a Zionist? Is it is it when they actually defend Israel? When they support the expansion of Israel into Gaza and the West Bank? Is it the acquisition, the reacquisition of Israel from 1940s? And taking it back from the Muslims who expelled the Jews with the Romans? Is it the 3,000 years of history that the Jews have that the Palestinians don't because they weren't there? What is it? Do you believe it's because a lot of Jewish people are in the media and in law and they have a, 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 a long, extensive panache or, or penchant for, for, for running banks? W what is it? So when you say Zionism, is it that you believe that there is a Jewish conspiracy to take over the world? Is that because Ben Shapiro runs one of the most conservative and successful media companies, therefore he's a Zionist? Do you believe that he's espousing things about the Talmud? Do you believe that he drinks the blood of Christians and drinks the penises of small boys in order to remain youthful? What, what is it? I'm interested, I'm interested to find out what you believe makes Ben Shapiro a Zionist. So let me know. Because I, I might take some umbrage with that. Because in, in, in my estimation, just to be honest with you, just b talking man to man with no offense. By the way, I love your dog. Cute dog. Calling someone a Zionist is, is like calling him a kike in today's world. You can't say kike anymore. You can't say dirty Jew because that stuff doesn't work. So, and, and for any YouTuber, see this YouTube knows now, so does Facebook. They know I would never use that language, but they understand I'm making a point and I'm going to say it because I've got no problem saying it. I've got Jewish friends. I can say that, right? But those are the words and you can't call them vermin anymore. And you can't call them roaches like the, like the 1940s Nazis did. And we can't put a gold star on them. And we can't go ahead and tattoo a number on them. And we certainly can't go ahead and have Auschwitz 2.0. So instead, we call them Zionists. And somehow that makes everything that we say posthumously from that word makes it okay. Why? Now, I have taken on the Groypers. I've taken on the Fuentes boys who all came at me and called me a Jew lover and insulted my grandmother and insulted my heritage and said I was a Jew because my great grandmother fled the Holocaust. Well, so did my Nazi uh, uncle. So I, I don't know what to tell you. I've got both sides that I'm ashamed of at times. And, and, and when I say ashamed, it's certainly not my grandmother, but we could go back to the peacocks, the plums and the spears in Georgia. The Spears are a very prominent family in Georgia, and they owned a shite grip of slaves and plantations. I've read the wills. I'll tell you what, if there is going to be an ethnic cleansing of white people who have oppressed people throughout history, I'm going to go pretty fast. 
But all you got to do is look at my, my relationships with African Americans or Jews or homosexuals or anyone else in the workplace at Apple and Comcast, Xfinity, where I've worked in the United States Navy, in the military, working in the Pentagon, working for limited brands, Wexler brands. Yes, I did that too. I worked for three Fortune 15s. And in that time, I have hired or worked with on my team 30,000 people. And I will tell you that before DEI was cool, my staff was diverse based upon their talent. And it had nothing to do with the color or if they sat down with a dick or without it. So I feel comfortable being able to talk about racial tropes without feeling like people are going to be offended by my language because that's truly what we're saying when you talk about Ben Shapiro is you're calling him those names because Zionist is somehow acceptable. Just like when people call Trump supporters MAGA tees, but we know it's not MAGA tees, it's maggots. They're calling us vermin. They're calling us insect. They're calling us the larva of fly shit. Are you okay with that? I'm not. So when you say Zionist, what the hell do you mean? Help me understand. Help me understand. Pappy says sticks and stones. What? Instead of sticks and stones, why don't you just say gas chambers and incinerators? What, what does that have to do? What, what are you? I need my chapstick. Now, uh, now I'm confused. With a first name like Pappy, shouldn't it be like Pappy O'Hanahan? I am Pappy O'Hanahan. I say of the seven seas. I just saw his name. Nothing to do with the conversation. Okay. What is your definition of Zionist? I'm, listen, I'm not coming down on Pappy. I want to know what he thinks. And, and when I talk to him, I'm not talking just about him. I'm talking about everyone who keeps using language. They're Zionist. They're this, they're that. You are awesome, Pappy says. Well, thanks, man. I'm just interested to know, what do you mean by Zionist? I think Pappy left. I hope he didn't leave. Hello, Angie. Ben Shapiro sucks. I like Candace better. Well, just because you like Candace better doesn't mean Ben Shapiro sucks. Ben Shapiro has done a shit ton for the conservative movement. I don't always agree with Ben. I don't like that he was a never Trumper. Um, I'm not a big fan about the things that he has said and the the wanton lust for genocide that he he's, you know, rain fire and brimstone. Let's turn this place into a pillar of salt. That's a little much. But I told everyone the Jews were going to do this. So I guess I'm an anti-Semitic too. But, I, but that's just because from militarily, I've worked with the IDF and I've worked with uh, Mossad. So it, there we go. I'm a freaking spook again. Yes, I, I'm a spook. That's right. I'm controlled opposition. I'm controlled opposition who will tell you the truth that I've said all along that Israel was going to flatten Gaza. Flatten. Indiscriminately. I said in the next 30 days, they're going to turn that thing into a parking lot. Well, guess what? I was right about that too. Nikki Haley is pro-gun. RFK, not so much. That's right, Alex. I like the bobbleheads in the background. It's cool, dude, aren't they? We've got... Uh, I've got Obama. I've got Kamala. I've got Bernie. I've got AOC, Biden, Hillary, and uh, Fauci. The ouchie Fauci. How do I find the coffee? Go to thedumbshow.com and then uh, go to shop and just select coffee. And you'll see all of our brands of coffee. It's nice to see you all talking in. So big hello from sunny San Diego. Thanks, Larry. Religion is a bad word. I try very hard to walk like Jesus. I Okay, here we go. <laughs> Veda sold her soul for money. Will not be on a ballot. Stop lying to yourself. Who said she was going to be on the ballot? Who said she was going to be president? Not me. Sold her soul. Please tell me how. How much is Tulsi Gabbard worth? How did she sell her soul? Help me understand. She took money from a defense contractor? Would you like me to go ahead and break down how many conservatives, including Jim Jordan, Chip Roy, MTG, Lauren Bubert, have all taken money from defense contractors? Kevin McCarthy? Mike Johnson? Steve Scalise? Would you like me to walk you through that? 
So what we're upset about is that the next is that she's a neocon warmonger. Okay, so which wars did she start as a UN ambassador and a governor? Can you tell me? No, you can't. Has she said some shit that needs to be put in check? Yeah, she's a vice president. She says stupid stuff like using operators and using SEAL teams to fight the cartel. Yeah, we would be bringing people home in body bags and droves. We've already had a Vietnam. We don't need another one. She's stupid about that. Who cares? She has the best abortion policy of any conservative I've heard in 20 years, and it can win an election. Because I don't know if you're aware of this, but it was on the ballot in 2020. It was on the ballot in 2022. It was on the ballot in 2023. And I promise you, I swear to God, it's going to be on the ballot in 2024. And if we don't address it as Republicans and get a platform that we all agree on versus everybody playing grab ass and woo -hoo, woo -hoo, bouncing off the walls, and we can't even answer a simple question on Pundit Sunday on broadcast TV, then we're going to lose again. We need to have a platform. We need to establish what conservative principles are. We haven't had a party platform since 2016. What are the values of the Republican Party? Somebody tell me, because I don't know. And I study it every freaking day. I can tell you what Ronald Reagan believed. I can tell you what Donald Trump believed. I can't tell you what the RNC believes. Can you? No, you can't. We can't even get a speaker voted for. We go ahead and impeach our own freaking, uh, we want to impeach our own speakers. We go ahead and post articles of no confidence against our speaker. And he's, he's the most conservative, religious freaking speaker we've ever had. And MTG wants to out him. Uh, okay. Sold her soul for money. That is such, what, when did Christians get so judgy? I thought we weren't supposed to do, what do you mean she sold her soul? She sold a house? She made money and profited on a house and turned it through COVID. I did the same thing. Did I sell my soul? She worked for a defense contractor and got on the board. Do you know how many? I've been on a board. I was on the Starlight Child's Foundation. Did I sell my soul? I got money for that. I've been on 501c3 boards for a shit ton of time. Do I? Did I sell my soul? So what we're saying is, is that she exudes capitalism. So you're saying she took money from Democrat donors? So did Donald Trump. Donald Trump met with BlackRock. Are, are we aware of that? Did you know he met with the Koch brothers? Did you know he met with the owners of Chase Bank? In 2020, he petitioned them for money. In 2016, he did too. Does that mean Donald Trump sold his soul? No, it means he's campaigning on a national level and he needs the money. Come on, sold her soul. So dramatic. Nobody said Haley's eligible to be president. Nobody said she's going to be president. That's not what we said. Let's listen. You gotta listen. Zionist literally means supporting Israel as a country for the Jews, a home country. People try to twist definitions to suit their agenda. That is correct. Nobody said Nikki Haley is going to be the president of the United States. Did you listen to the video? So, so, so let me get this straight. You didn't listen to me for three and a half years when I told you this was coming. You told me there's no way Trump is going to pick Haley. I'm crazy. I'm nuts. She's a neocon. Now Megyn Kelly, Dave Rubin, and Tucker Carlson are all saying it. And now I'm still wrong? <laughs> so when he actually does it, are you going to come back and apologize? No. What you're going to do is be like, trust the plan. Donald Trump knows what he's doing. He's playing 4D chess. And I won't get my fark an apology. Part of the plan. Right? I won't get my apology. Okay, that's fine. <sighs> Whatever. There seems to be an interesting thing happening with Nikki right now. It's an interesting video, and you should watch it and tell me what you think. I don't know if Nikki will be the choice, but I'll tell you from a vote standpoint, it's very reminiscent of what happened with Mike Pence. Mike Pence was not Donald Trump's first choice. Mike Pence delivered... Uh, the, the Southern rust belt, or excuse me, the rust belt, the Northeastern middle of the road rust belt that was not happy, specifically the Christian community who was not happy with Donald Trump based on the grabbing by the pussy comments. Mike Pence came in and added, uh, more, a more theological grounded type conservative, a normal conservative. And this is what vice presidents do. They come in and they provide the president 
an avenue to win the Electoral College based upon what they currently can't get. And right now, the get is the 20 to 22% that she's polling and still polling. Listen, you don't have to like it. You just have to listen to it. Or you don't. You can turn it off. And then you can come back to me when I'm right and be like, hey, Matt, I'm sorry. But that won't happen because that never happens. It just doesn't happen. All right. Let's get to a couple of other things. You guys saw this picture, I'm assuming. Let me get this in here. So I did an article on this. Let me get this photo. Close it. You guys had a chance to see this, I'm sure. You had Obama, Biden, and Clinton come up from the ground floor during the exact same time Donald Trump was... There seems to be an interesting thing happening with Nikki here. right now where there's two... Donald Trump went to a funeral, and it's on the dumbnews.com. You can see it, for a fallen police officer. And they have been touting how wonderful it is that Democrats are so united, so united, as Officer Jonathan Diller, Diller was being laid to rest. And Donald Trump went there. Donald Trump eulogized and spoke over the officer. He was invited by the family. He was magnanimous. He didn't take the time to sell his Bible during that. Hey, if you've got a dead officer, you can buy my Bible. No. He took a photo. He had some words to say. He spoke of law and order. He spoke of the nonsensical loss of a New York City police officer due to progressive DAs, due to the rampant crime in that city with the absolute unfettered amount of illegals that are coming into that city who are trying to destroy Donald Trump who did absolutely contribute to the skyline of New York City, who was there for 9-11, who was there for Rudy Giuliani's policies of cleaning up New York, who had followed mayors and used his influence to help that city persevere through some very tough times. Is Donald Trump perfect? No. But once again, the old adage is true, is nothing that Donald Trump can do will ever be okay. So you've got combined wealth between Clinton, Obama, and, and, and Biden, close to a billion dollars. You throw in the Clintons, $330 million plus, plus their foundation and all their other shell, shell companies. You got Obama, who's around the, roughly the same. And then you got you got Biden, who's on the precipice of 149 and will be pushing 250 million as soon as he gets out on the lecture circuit, thumbing tapioca while he's watching Matlock episodes. You got a billion dollars up there. You are calling it the largest support initiative for a president ever. <laughs> Allergy, sorry. And you're charging $100,000 for a photograph. $100,000 for Bill Clinton, Joe Biden, and Obama, which should be a mugshot. And you're charging $100,000 to sit with these three clowns. And you know what? I'm not even going to say Bill Clinton's a clown. You know what? Because if we can support Donald Trump with all of his indiscretions, we can support Bill. Bill wasn't a horrible president. Bill did two things, okay? He shut down the military and he cut defense spending in order to get a surplus. That pissed me off. I served under him. We, we, we had Humvees without Kevlar, without, without reinforced metal. We had 
non-depleted uranium rounds. We had didn't have the tactical advantage that we needed to with body armor. We didn't have the things that we needed to be successful in our military. Our naval vessels went down. We triple loaded all of our support structures in, in, in the Navy and in the Air Force. We didn't get the aircraft maintenance we needed. Bill Clinton shut down bases, lost jobs, and lowered personnel in the military. I despise him for that. Other than that, Bill Clinton wasn't that bad. Compared to what we got now? Holy crap, not even close. And I think most people who are honest would agree with me. But still, Bill Clinton is a freaking a horrible human being. But like Bill Cosby, we can respect Bill Cosby himself, the comedy special and the Cosby show, but we can completely find that what he did after that was abhorrent. We can say the same thing about Bill. We can think about what he did to the women in his life. We can think the women who he forced in his life. We can talk about Monica Lewinsky. We can talk about Flowers. We can talk about all of them and go down the list. We can talk about Epstein's Island. We can talk about the photos. We can talk about the 23, uh, 23 visits to Epstein Island. Uh, we can talk about the tarmac. We can talk about his influence peddling when it came to Hillary Clinton and the investigation with the attorney general. We can do all these things. Bill Clinton's a piece of, piece of work. But compared to Biden and Obama, I, it's hard for me to sit here and say that I wouldn't want Bill Clinton in office right now, and that's a scary thing. Never thought I'd hear those words come out of my mouth, but compared to the two, holy shite. Holy, whoever thought that we would miss Bill Clinton Whoever thought we would miss Bush Jr.? Oh, the Bushes. The royal family. The Bushes. And then you got Donald Trump, who goes to a funeral, doesn't charge a damn thing, doesn't bring his book, doesn't charge his NFTs, doesn't charge his shoes. He just shows up and he goes because he was invited and it's the right thing to do. And they still, instead of saying, Biden's out of touch, you go in a room full of your mega donors, you suppress the audience, you start doing background checks on people so you don't have hecklers, you still get four hecklers in that room. You bring them up in some weird rock star idol devil worship bullshit where Obama, Clinton, and Biden are risen up from the floor with mist and lasers and weird ass lights and they sit there and they pay homage to false prophets. Give me a break what has happened to the Democrat party. Irish Catholics are rolling over their graves. Kennedys would shat themselves if Johnny and Bobby were still alive. Paying homage and deference to men. It's, it's, it's disgusting. It's just as bad as the Trump idols, the people who think that he's anointed by God makes me sick. These people are men. They are not to be revered. They're not to be idolized. You can show respect, but what you don't do is treat them like they're rock stars and worship at the altar and kiss their feet like they're kings. Didn't we learn this lesson? Didn't we fight a revolution to stay away from this type of autocracy? The monarchs, the royalty, the bloodline of Charlemagne tainted with the souls of peasants and serfs who were slaughtered by the hundreds of thousands in medieval times and the Crusades, from the Romans and the Christians thrown in pits to the, the Cossacks throwing in small children of Christian belief and faith. Is this what we want again? We want a subservient culture of kings and queens that we idolize like England? Joe Biden and Obama are not men to be revered. They're men to be held accountable. They're men who are designed to represent the United States. That's their job. But yet they raised $25 million in one single event. $25 million. $100,000 to take a photograph with these clowns. As the press has a conversation with Obama and Biden and asks them about Air Force One, and Biden says, well, Trump wants to paint Air Force One, and Obama says, we won't allow that. What's this we shit? The only reason Obama is coming out 
and supporting Donald Trump is because Joe Biden is getting his ass kicked. And I know what the poll numbers say. I know. I understand there's a narrowing and a tightening of the polls, and there always are. And they will continue to do so. But this shit right here makes me absolutely nauseous. This picture. The dark Brandon crap. Sitting around with sunglasses. Inside. Wearing your $3,000 suits that Arafat wore. Buying your London freaking imported suits and your silk, Egyptian silk ties. Masters of the universe. This is the working class of the Democrat people, huh? This, these are the guys, these multimillionaires, the elite of the elite. You've got one president who sticks a, a cigar and a woman's vagina on the resolute desk inside the Oval Office who says they're bankrupt and then steals millions of dollars from Haitians and the Clinton Foundation, takes money from Uranium One, has money stuck in their account from Saudi Arabia, yet they are under the guise of protecting women, and these people throw uh, Christians, throw homosexuals, lesbians off of buildings still, and you take money from them. Beat their wives with canes, throw acid on their face. These are the, these are the Clintons that you want to emulate. The Clintons who uh, are responsible for Benghazi and the reaction there from an inept Secretary of State who did absolutely nothing. For a person who, if I did what she did when I was in intelligence and took confidential, top-secret SCI material from a skiff and I cook a, took a computer program home and installed it on an unsecure server, I'd be in jail for the rest of my life. I'd be in jail for the rest of my life. They'd throw away the key. Leavenworth. And then you've got Obama. You've got Obama who spied on Americans, millions of Americans, without warrants, without due process. Checked our email, our social media accounts, listened to our phone calls. Spied on Americans under the guise of the Patriot Act. Created the single largest network of spying the world has ever seen against its own citizens. How about the 286 uh, Americans who were killed? I don't give a shit if they were Al-Qaeda or ISIS. Yeah, you should take those people out, but do it through due process. You want to go ahead and do military strikes and have them be enemy combatants? Then classify them as enemy combatants. Give the list to the gain of eight. Put it on notice. Write a piece of legislation that if you join a terrorist nation and leave the United States and support them, that will be considered an act of terrorism against the United States and it's punishable by death, full stop. Then instead of using secret FISA courts to go ahead and hold Donald Trump and spy on his campaign and make up fictitious bullshit to get your warrants for him, why don't you get the warrants for the 286 people that were overseas that you killed with drone strikes, including the civilians who were harmed? How about the pallets full of cash to Iran? How about Uranium One? How about going ahead and curtailing on the Paris Accords and, and being soft and giving soft money to China and France and Iran, and other countries who fell within the Paris uh, uh, Climate Accords? How about the money that was used by Iran to go ahead and do strikes all over the Middle East based upon the money and the pallets full of cash that you dropped off to the Iranians so they would do the Iran nuclear deal, which did nothing? All you did was give them time to go ahead and move the things and cloak the things and keep it away from any inspection that would take place. Donald Trump lifted those type of things, but the damage had already been done. What about that guy? What about the fast and the furious? What about the gun running? What about authorizing the spying of Donald Trump's campaign? What about that? But this guy sits up here in sunglasses and sits up here in a $3,000 suit. What about Joe Biden? If we really do care about confidential documents, then shouldn't we go ahead and care about his if we care about money coming in from Russia and China and you get upset that Donald Trump sells Bibles, why aren't you just as upset that that is money from his supporters, but you're not upset that this fucking guy takes money from China and Russia? Where's the outrage? Where's the outrage from the left 
that sees this guy sit in New York, sit in Chicago. He's going to travel these black neighborhoods, and he has done nothing for gang violence. He's done nothing for the African-American community. They are killed more than any other demographic on gun use, and it's always done in a felony crime. Accidental shootings and felonious crime in the top 37 of the, of the 50 Democrat-run cities is what's causing the crime and death of an entire generation of blacks. And here's the thing. You no longer are using eugenics to go ahead and depopulate blacks with abortion. Now you're just letting them kill each other. The question is, is when are you guys going to actually wake up and realize that they will not be happy until you are like the American Indian? that you're so insignificant on land that is so shitty and so horrible that nobody wants that they no longer care about you. So they stuff alcohol down your throat and they give you fake ways to make money, which is your own money, on taxation of your people through gambling and tell you that you somehow have a future, that you can tax your Indian nation and Indian reservation into prosperity by taxing your own people into oblivion, by giving them addictions. Yeah, that worked really well. When are we going to realize that the same methodology of crack cocaine lawlessness, progressive DAs that continue to make these neighborhoods fall so they have no other choice but to rely on the government to subsidize the income that they cannot make in these inner cities. When are we going to wake up? But you go ahead and get excited that these fuckers were charging $100,000 for a picture, but none of them would even spit on you if you asked. But you know what? Donald Trump does. Donald Trump doesn't charge his people to take a photograph. My good friend Troy, double amputee, United States Marine Corps, he didn't charge him a penny. And he sat down and he embraced him. He's in a wheelchair and he wouldn't allow any photos to be taken. He didn't charge him anything. Donald Trump didn't charge me anything to take my medical disability, which was illegally taken from me in 1999 through taxes, 50% taxed. It is an untaxable severance because it's medical. He gave that back to me 21 years later with interest. And I didn't ask for it. He didn't charge me a dime for that. Cut me a check for almost $3,700. And Donald Trump says, we took this money from you illegally with an apology letter, and it wasn't even him. He didn't charge me a penny. Go look it up. Think I'm lying? Go look it up. I've already done a show on it. Donald Trump didn't charge me anything. Not a penny. You want to go and get a picture with the president? Ask him. Does he have fundraisers? Sure. Does he ask people to give money? Sure. But once again, I would rather go with a guy who gets money from his followers than a bunch of ostentatious pricks, the three stooges who get money from foreign governments, who have the wool over everybody's eyes, who each one of them have done crimes against this country and are not held accountable. And you might say, well, what about Donald Trump? What about Donald Trump? If Donald Trump broke the law, hold him accountable. And he has 86 indictments now that he's going to have to face. And if he's guilty, he's going to have to pay the piper. And I won't stand by him if he was wrong. If he has proven to break the law, really break it, not some civil bullshit, I will stand behind the decision of the courts. But until it's a criminal prosecution, go fuck yourself. Because civil is a crackpot joke. I can be sued because I tell someone that they're an asshole on the internet. Pardon my French if it offends you. If Donald Trump broke the law, he needs to pay. But right now, I see a bunch of civil cases and judgments that are there to design to get him out of a race and not designed to hold him accountable. The criminal charges that are against him are all stalling, are being reduced, are being extended because the prosecution doesn't have what they want. And they are going to milk this tit until they get to the election. And damn Skippy, if he loses, you'll never hear about this shit again. This isn't about justice. If they wanted justice, they wouldn't go, they would go after uh, Clinton. They would go after Biden and they would go after Obama and continue to go after Donald Trump if he broke the law. That's justice, not this bullshit. This is a dog and pony show. It's a bunch of crap. And you know it's crap. And the, and the liberals know it's crap. I don't have a problem with Donald Trump being held accountable. 
I have a problem with only Donald Trump being held accountable. Period, plain and simple. Folks, you can do me a favor. Some people want to know how to support. I get that question quite a bit. You can go to PayPal me, paypal.me slash don't unfriend me, and you can donate. If you want to donate monthly, you want to donate one time, you just want to throw a couple bucks my way and say, hey, thanks a lot. Everything you see, all the lights, the, the office, the cameras, everything is paid for by us. This is a company that we own 100%, and we've been bringing the truth to you for three and a half years. We've grown. We've gotten better. When we first started, it was pretty funny, but we're still doing what we do. My wife and I do this every weeknight. We're always working on the weekend. So if you can help us out, we'd appreciate it. If you can't do that and you're like, eh, I don't want to do that, that's fine. Go to thedumbshow.com. And what you can do is pick up a shirt, like the Red Friday shirt. We have hats. We have coffee. I'm telling you, the clothes we have there are badass. You will love the shirts. They are the most comfortable, stretchy, uh, athletic fit or not. It doesn't matter. If you're built like me, it's going to fit you in all the right places. If you're not built like me, it's still going to fit you in all the right places. It's a great shirt. I'm telling you, nobody has ever complained about how great our shirts are. All right, let's go and do one more. One more? Can we do one more? Make this a long one? Oh, jeez. I guess this is going to be my recorded show today. That's fine. I'll try to trim it up. See what I can do. Uh, one more video. The view. Oh, Lord. How do I, how do I, why do I put myself through this torture? I wonder. I wonder. Let's see if I can get this up. Okay, Google Chrome. I like this new feature on Macs. This is cool. Okay, let's see if you guys can get this. Can you guys see that? You know what we're going to do? I got to get the new window. I, uh, I'm going to download this. It'll be easier. So... This is the new setup, and my big, this be standing, I don't have my big monitor, um, so I can't, I can't effectively drag and drop everything, so I'm going to do something you're not supposed to see. Shh, I'm hunting wabbits. Oh, pesky wabbits. Oh, no, I don't want bookmarks. No, 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 no. No, no, that would be bad. That would be bad. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Whoops, spelled that wrong. Do do do. Um, everyone avert their eyes. Okay. All right, you didn't see that. I'll deny everything. Okay. Downloads. Oh, where is it? Son of a beach. Oh, it's on the desktop. I moved it. Bam. 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 Your first tour in six I know. Just don't say anything. Just, just shh. Oh, where's my window? There it is. So it's going to be that one. And we're going to change this. And we're going to go to this. Should have done this when I set it up. Sorry, y'all. What can I say? I'm a rookie. All right, there we go. All right, so thank you for your patience. All right, so this is The View, and this is one of my favorite people in the whole world, Kathy freaking Griffin. Kathy Griffin is the one that did the severed head against Trump and went ahead and uh, took pictures. Now she's been complaining about it because she's been fired and let go. And of course, she apologized, but she didn't. She wasn't sorry. She didn't give a shit. She doesn't care what she did. She only apologized so she could get her money. Well, now she's back on the view saying, oh, woe is me. I stubbed a toenail. 
I, I, I tried to attempt suicide. Those problems were there long before Donald Trump. Let's listen to this. Yeah. Six so. years I was out of work because of that. <laughs> there, I said what it was. All about a picture. A picture yeah. I took. Yeah. Making fun of the president, which you're supposed to do as a comic. Yeah. Yeah, that's not quite what happened. You took a severed, bloodied head with a masticated neck, with skin hanging off, with bulging, bloody eyes, with matted arterial red hair, and you hung it with a bloody butcher knife, the one that O.J. Simpson somehow lent you after Nicole Brown Simpson. That's a little bit different than you took a picture making fun of the president, you freaking alcoholic hack. The term in the title PTSD is yeah. not used lightly no. because you have PTS post-traumatic stress. It's not a disorder. It's curable. Piss off. Survived so much career cancellation. Yeah. And okay. Kathy Griffin does not have PTS. All right. PTS is for people who actually go through th things that they did not expect or deserve. This lady deserved everything she got. She loves the attention. That's why she's back right now and going ahead and saying all the apologies that she said to kiss ass to get back into the fray. She's now backpedaling because she knows that this is recoverable as long as she jumps on the I can talk shit about Trump train. It's worthless hack. She's not funny. She's not a Christian. She's not a good person. She's a douche plow. Federal investigation over the Trump photo controversy. Yeah, no fly list. Yeah. Interpol list stopped at every airport. Good. You threatened the president of the United States inadvertently with that. Give me a break. Hey, Ed, thank you for your donation. I appreciate that. It means a great deal. Thank you so much. Every dollar helps. Ed has decided to donate $20 to the Don't Unfriend Me show. It means a great deal, my friend. If you want to donate to the Don't Unfriend Me show, pretty simple. All you got to do is go to PayPal me. And you can do that with paypal.me slash don't unfriend me. Or you can go to linktapgo.com slash the dumb show. Let's listen to the rest of this. The whole thing. Yeah. You wow. also, and none of these are small. A pill addiction. Pill addiction. A suicide attempt. Suicide attempt. Lung I, cancer. I, and I was on a psych hold for three days. And I know you can't, you can tell why. But I was on <laughs> a psych hold. So it was like, I was like Britney and Kanye combined. Wow. And I was like, I walked into my own act. Wow. Cycle for three days. Wow. But you also... But now I'm in recovery. Mm. I'm sober three and a half years. Oh. That's amazing. Oh, congratulations. Congrat. You know what? I like her more. Do you want to your first I, I honestly liked her more when she was a drug addict. At least you were authentic. So I guess when I called her an alcoholic, she is an alcoholic, so I was right. So she can't sue me. Uh, and, and I don't mean to make fun of drug addiction and alcohol because it's serious and everyone knows that I'm a habitual addict and I've recovered. But I don't sit here and go, applaud for me. Please, I'm so brave. I had PTS because you know what? You deserve to be on a no-fly list. You're a douche plow. You took it too far. You took comedy too far. Can you imagine if somebody went ahead and got a severed head that resembled Joe Biden and walked around it and put it on an ice cream cone and walked around and ate it? Can you imagine what would happen to those people? Give me a break, lady. You got exactly what you wanted. You wanted to shock the world at how edgy you were. And then when the rain came down and the thunder came down and people turned on you faster than a broken Swiss watch, you decided to go ahead and say that you're the victim. You're not the victim. You're the perpetrator. You're not the victim in this case. You went after Donald Trump and you paid the price. Price. Period. That's it. End of story. Folks, thanks for watching the Donut for Emmy show. We're going to go ahead and cut this into a recorded show, I think. And uh, I will have that up in a little bit. If you do me a favor, we're going to be back tonight. Amy, Leroy, Olivia, and myself will all be here. And we are going to do a Friday evening show. I'm really interested to get Leroy's perspective on the vessel and the bridge. We're going to bring you some new news and all that stuff. Once again, I'm going to say the one thing I always say. If you could help us out, we appreciate it. We are completely privately funded. And we go off donations. Link tap go slash the dumb show. Mods are going to put it up there for you. If you would do me a favor and please go take a look. Peruse around at the dumb show.com. Help us out. Thanks. I'll see you tonight at seven o'clock. We'll have some news update around four o'clock with a new article on news.thedumbshow as well. God bless. See you later at seven. Thanks, everybody.
Adjusting transmitter output. This is the Don't Unfriendly Show with your hosts, Matt, Leroy, Amy, Olivia and Mike. Geopolitics, military analysis and election coverage. Coming to you live on the Spreely.tv network and all major social media channels at The Dumb Show. Honest, direct, unfiltered. We can agree, we can disagree. Just don't unfriend me.